Mega Man X is one of those games that you just have problems putting to words. For me, as well as so many others, the series jump to 16 bits was highly anticipated. I was already a super fan of the Mega Man franchise, and when the new game was announced, I was incredibly excited. I drew pictures of what the new Robot Masters would potentially look like, and bought as many gaming magazines as I could to find out more about the game. I finally played the game at a second-hand video game store, the first one I ever got to visit, by the way, and died at the end of the intro level. I begged my parents to get me the game, and for my birthday, I finally got my wish. Mega Man X is one of my favorite games, and I've actually had to rewrite this review several times because this game is just too near to me. Outside of maybe Final Fantasy III for the Super Nintendo, this is probably my favorite game on a console. Writing reviews for games that I don't love as much is a lot easier, but being objective with a game that I genuinely love is really tough. So, we're just going to have to agree that for the next few minutes, I'm going to gush about Mega Man X. The story in Mega Man X actually has more impact than it did in previous Mega Man games. Characters have dialogue and motivation, the themes are a bit more mature and interesting, and it makes the overall experience just that much better. However, you can mostly skip any of the story elements and you still get an incredibly solid and excellent gaming experience. The story and characters are completely new for a completely new series, taking place years after Mega Man and his cohorts are gone. This time, other characters drop in to take the place of Dr. Wily, Proto Man, and the others. X is the new model of Super Fighting Robot by a long-deceased Dr. Light. Reploids and Mavericks take the place of Robots and Robot Masters. Zero replaces Proto Man as a mentor and friend to the main character. And Sigma, the former good Reploid gone Maverick, tags in as the evil mastermind, taking Dr. Wily's role. The graphics in Mega Man X are the first noticeable change you see from the 8-bit series when you boot the game. X himself is incredibly detailed and looks so much more lifelike than his predecessor, Mega Man. The character and enemy sprites are all intricately detailed and animated. The enemies look like they could actually be assembled as real robots, and they match their concept art very well. Weapon effects are also incredibly cool looking. The backdrops and platform elements are all drawn to look like the setting they take place in. Chill Penguin's Arctic Mountains just look cold. The backgrounds and buildings in Storm Eagle stage look like they belong in an airport, as they should. The mechanically infused woods in Sting Chameleon stage really have that natural look, but with that Mega Man flair we've grown to love. Everything about Mega Man X looks great, and there just aren't many flaws. The music is all hard driving rock, and could even be described as... The tracks all fit the stages they were written to represent. Chill Penguin's stage has a cold but urgent feel to it. Launch Octopus's stage sounds like it belongs underwater. Spark Mandrill's theme is electric and powerful. Every track sounds great, and so many people have done their own excellent fan covers, such as the talented artists featured in this video. Banjo Guy Ollie, V Mike, and Project Genesis. Gameplay in Mega Man X retained the jump and shoot mechanics that made the predecessor series so popular, though new mechanics were added to present a fresh and new experience that was still familiar. X can cling to walls and climb up them. This new mechanic necessitated another significant change to the series, vertical scrolling. Mega Man games have mostly been all about moving left to right, with the occasional vertical movement to move up to a different plane. In Mega Man X, the screen will now pan up and down with Mega Man making the world feel a lot bigger and grander than before. This change may be the one part about Mega Man X's gameplay that seems less than polished. Sure, it's a welcome and cool addition, but it often leaves you making blind jumps. Jumping off of a tall structure or into an ocean may mean certain death if you don't know where you are going. Veteran players aren't bothered by this nearly as much, but for people who aren't as familiar with the game, it may lead to taking damage from unseen enemies or losing a life to a bottomless pit. Capcom introduces us to collecting new power-ups in Mega Man X, outside of the Robot Master, or in this case, Maverick, weapons. 
Heart tanks increase the short health bar you begin the game with. Sub tanks are refillable and a permanent addition to your inventory, and they replace the E tanks from the original series. Armor parts power up X throughout his adventure, giving him the ability to charge his special weapons, take half damage, break certain blocks, and dash. Dashing replaces the old Mega Man series slide mechanic, and while the old slide wasn't hard to activate, the new dash button is even easier. With more buttons on the SNES controller, Capcom was able to designate a specific button to the dash, which I always change from the A button to the R shoulder button for easier access. The dash makes Mega Man X a much faster paced experience than the old 8-bit games. X is fast, and after some getting used to the controls and jumping mechanics, you'll be zipping around stages and boss battles like a pro. Dashing even gives X the ability to jump even farther, making hard to reach places easier to get to. Mega Man X is another non-linear experience, giving you the choice to tackle whichever stage you want in whichever order you want. Beating Mavericks in a particular order can have an effect on other stages in the game. For instance, beating Chill Penguin freezes all the lava in the Flame Mammoth stage, and beating Storm Eagle crashes a plane into Spark Mandrel's level, leaving the power situation kinda flaky. It's an incredibly cool touch by Capcom. Mega Man X is indeed one of the best games on the Super Nintendo, and perhaps one of the best games of all time. Aside from a few very minor flaws with the game, you know, the vertically scrolling sections that I mentioned, it's damn near perfect. The neat little touches that Capcom decided to add, such as the statistics on the stage select screen for each Maverick and Ryu and Ken's Hadouken from the Street Fighter series, just little touches like that make it such a great experience. I love this game, and it's definitely one that I prefer to play several times a year. Now, if you want to play Mega Man X, I recommend getting a physical card. They're not that expensive anymore. You can get one for under 30, and I really think that 30 is a good price to pay for a game like this. If you have a PS2, you can pick up the Mega Man X collection. I think it was on the Xbox as well. And I think it might be a little bit harder to find a little bit pricier, but if you come across it and it's a good price, it's not a bad way to play Mega Man. There was also a really cool PSP remake that I know some people didn't really enjoy all that much, but I really liked it. And uh, that's the Mega Man X Maverick Hunter X, or Mega Man Maverick Hunter X. Um, but it's definitely worth a look as well. I love Mega Man X, and there's really not much else I can say about it. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks. Later. Thanks for watching. Like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff from me. Check me out on Twitter, Facebook, and Gaming Rebellion too.